Hi everyone, in this quick tip tutorial, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to create a perfectly symmetrical yin-yang symbol using the vector flood fill tool in Affinity Designer. Many thanks to Creator Collage member Marilyn for asking how to create this. If you're a digital artist who wants to be part of a free community of creators of all skill levels, check out the link to the Creator Collage below. So let's get started. We'll start by creating a base of strokes using five ellipses. I have my color picker set to no fill and a black stroke. Now mine is set to five points, but the size and the color really don't matter much. I'm going to use my Transform Studio to quickly place my shapes exactly where I need them, as well as size them to the exact pixel that I want them, rather than relying on dragging and snapping. So I've brought it up here so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to start with the largest ellipse here. So I'll grab my ellipse tool. Again, I have a uh, stroke selected and no fill, and I'll just find the middle here, hold down Command and Shift and drag out a perfect circle. Now I want to start with an even number because it makes it a lot easier to do the rest of the process. So I'll go to my Transform Studio and making sure that I have the chain link on so that my aspect ratio stays the same, I'll type in 2000. That's going to give me a 2000 pixel round circle. So that's my first shape. The next thing I want to do is to create the two circles that are going to form the rounded part of the two symbols here. I'm going to do that by Command J and duplicating this large shape. I'll go up to my Transform Studio and I want to size that duplicate down to a thousand pixels and force it to the left side of this larger shape. So I'm going to click this middle node on the left side, and I can either key in divided by two, or I can simply key in 1000. And it's going to give me a thousand pixel ellipse that's all the way to the left side of that circle. Now I wanna do the same thing, but on the right side. So I'm gonna grab that larger circle again. I'll Command J and duplicate it. This time I want to click the node over on the right side. And I'll go ahead and do divided by two. It's going to give me the same result, a thousand pixel ellipse that's forced all the way to the right side. So next I need to create the two smaller circles here and I'm going to use the same process. I'll release this and then reselect it. I'm doing that so I don't accidentally power duplicate it. I've just reselected this one. So I'll command J to duplicate it. And I want a 250 pixel circle that's in the middle of this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is click this node right in the middle. That's going to force it into the middle once I size it down. And I'll just type in 250. I'll go to the other side here. Command J to duplicate. I already have the middle node selected. And I'm just going to type divided by four this time. Both give you the same result. You don't have to use math, you can just key in the exact number. So I have all of my shapes that I need to create the final shape. What I'm going to do is move my Transform Studio out of the way, and I'll just go ahead and select all of my shapes. So you can see in my Layer Studio, I have all of them selected here. I'm going to hit R on my keyboard, that's going to select the Vector Flood Fill tool. You can also select the icon over here, and if you're on the iPad doing this, just look for the paint bucket that looks like it has nodes pouring out of it. So what I'm going to do is create my two shapes first, my two largest shapes, and you can start to see them forming here. So there's one, and then there's the other. Now it's really important that you select the tool first, and then select the color that you want to use, because the vector flood fill tool remembers the last tool, or I'm sorry, the last fill that you used. So I just want to make sure that I have black selected. So I'll just click on the black swatch here, and I'm going to click and drag. I'm not going to release my mouse because I want one large shape. And you'll see in my layer studio, it's going to give me this shape as one large curve. While I have the black fill selected, I'm going to go to the opposite smaller circle and click to create this circle here. I'll grab the white fill and we'll do the exact same thing. I'm going to click and drag. That's going to create this shape as one large curve. And then I'll click in the smaller circle and that's it. I'm going to turn off all of my strokes and I'm left with the symbol 
in four separate curves. So if I wanted to, I could add texture to these. I could add effects from the Effects Studio. I'm just going to go ahead and group these with a Command G. And I think I'll flip them, rotate them, and I'm all set. Now, I didn't go into great detail on the Vector Flood Fill tool in this tutorial, but I have an entire tutorial where I walk you step by step through the entire tool and show you how to use it to make some really fun projects. So I've linked that above as well as in the description. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please consider giving it a thumbs up as it helps more people find it. If you want more tutorials on Designer and the rest of the Affinity Suite, consider subscribing to my channel because there's lots more to come. In the meantime, if you're enjoying learning about Affinity, consider watching one of these two next. Thanks for watching.